Okay, so here we have a related rates problem where we're told that a baseball diamond has the shape of a square with sides 90 feet long. We're also told that a player running from second base to third base at a speed of 25 feet per second is 20 feet from third base. And then we want to find at what rate is the player's distance s from home plate changing. All right, so now the first thing that we want to do in this problem is just make sense of the information that we've been given. You can see that we have a picture or a diagram here of a baseball diamond or the infield of a baseball field. And if you're not familiar with baseball, there are four different bases or plates. You have the home base, first base, second base, and then third base. And the distance between each of those bases is 90 feet which we were told in this problem. The baseball diamond has the shape of a square with sides 90 feet long. All right, so the distance between any two adjacent bases is 90 feet. Now, something else that we know in this problem is that we have a player running from second base, that's this base right here, to third base, which is this base right here. So we have a baseball player running from this second base to this third base. Specifically, they are running at a speed of 25 feet per second, all right? And when they have that speed, they are at a specific distance of 20 feet from third base, all right? So let's add that to this picture here. I'm going to draw a baseball player here who is running, and I'll give him a little hat, all right? And so he is running from second base to third base. He is headed in this direction, and at the moment in time that we are looking at in this problem, where he is running at a speed of 25 feet per second, he is 20 feet from third base. So I'm going to label that as well. The distance from third base to the baseball player is 20 feet, all right? And I'm going to associate that distance with a variable of x, because that distance is not going to be constant throughout this problem. Right, the distance between third base and the baseball player is not always 20 feet. It's going to depend on where that baseball player is between those two plates. The total distance between third base and second base is 90 feet, but the actual distance between the baseball player and third base is going to be dependent on where he is between those plates. All right, so the distance between the baseball player and third base is not always 20 feet. It's going to change as the baseball player runs. And so that distance between the baseball player and third base, I'm going to associate with a variable x. And the reason why that's important is because we know the rate at which that distance is changing, right? We know that the baseball player is running from second to third at a speed of 25 feet per second when he's 20 feet from third base, right? So when this baseball player is 20 feet from third base, the speed at which that distance is changing is 25 feet per second. And so that's the first rate that we want to make a note of in this related rates problem. We know the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is equal to 25 feet per second. All right, the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is the rate at which this distance between the baseball player and third base is changing. However, we do need to make an adjustment here because if you think about it, as the baseball player gets closer to third base, that distance of x, the distance between the baseball player and third base, is going to get smaller, right? As he gets closer to that base, that distance of x will decrease until the player eventually gets to third base. And so this rate at which x is changing would be a negative rate because that distance is getting smaller. So really, the rate at which x is changing with respect to time is a negative 25 feet per second. That distance is getting smaller. All right, so that's the rate that we know from this problem. But now we also know that when this rate is active, when x is changing with respect to time at negative 25 feet per second, that that distance of x is 20 feet. So we can also write down that x is equal to 20 feet. All right, that is not a constant value, but it is the value of x at the specific moment in time where this rate is taking place. Okay, now continuing on in this problem, we want to know at what rate is the player's distance s from home plate changing. All right, so now we have another distance that we're working with. The distance s 
is the distance between the baseball player and home plate. And so that distance looks something like this. That is S. We don't know what that distance is because it's going to change depending on where the baseball player is between second and third base, right? As the baseball player moves between those two bases, the distance between the baseball player and home plate is going to change. We want to know at what rate is that distance S changing. So we want to know what DS DT is equal to. We do not know what that rate is, and that's what we want to find in this related rates problem. All right, and so that's pretty much everything that we know from this problem. Now what we have to do is create an equation that relates the different variables we're working with such that we can take the derivative of that equation with respect to time and solve for our unknown rate. And so let's work on that next. Let's determine how we can create an equation to relate x and s to each other. And so how can we do that? How can we relate the distance x between the baseball player and third base and the distance s from the baseball player to home plate? Well, you might have noticed if you look at this distance here of x, this distance here of s, and then this constant 90 foot distance between third base and home plate, those three distances or those three sides form a triangle, right? If I draw a triangle here, you could think of the longest side, the hypotenuse, as being that distance of S from the baseball player to home plate. You can think of this shorter side as X, the distance between the baseball player and third base. And then the third side would be that constant length of 90 feet from third base to home plate. That distance is not going to change depending on where the baseball player is. The baseball player could be over here, over here, down here. The distance between third base and home plate will always be 90 feet. That's not going to change. All right, so the third side has a measurement of 90. Now, it's important to realize that this triangle would be a right triangle. This angle right here would be 90 degrees. And that's because a baseball diamond has the shape of a square, right? This is a square here. So each angle of that square is a right angle. And the reason why it's important to realize that this is a right triangle is because what that allows us to do is relate these three sides using the Pythagorean theorem, right? Our goal here is to create an equation that relates X and S, the two variables we're working with, so that then we can take the derivative of that equation and solve for our unknown related rate. And so we can do that now by recognizing that these different distances in this baseball diamond form a triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to relate X and S with an equation. And so if you remember, the Pythagorean theorem says that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. In other words, we know that S squared is equal to X squared plus 90 squared, all right? The hypotenuse or the longest side, which is S, that side squared will be equal to this side squared, x squared, plus the other side squared. So we have 90 squared. And so this equation right here relates s and x, those two distances that we are working with in this problem. And so now we have an equation that we can take the derivative of with respect to time in order to solve for this unknown rate. All right, and so now let's work on that. Let's take the derivative of this equation with respect to time or with respect to t. And so remember, you want to take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to t. So we'll have the derivative with respect to t of s squared, and we'll take the derivative with respect to t of x squared plus 90 squared. All right, and so remember, when we do this, since we are not taking the derivative of a variable t in either case, we are performing implicit differentiation here. We're taking the derivative of a variable with respect to another variable, right? S is not t and x is not t. So when we take these derivatives, we need to remember to multiply by their respective rates. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. But first, let's just treat s here as if it was t and take its derivative. When you take the derivative of a variable to a power, you multiply that power down and then subtract one from that power. So we'll have two times s, but then because this is implicit differentiation, we also need to multiply by the derivative 
of s with respect to t, ds dt, okay? Since we're taking a derivative of s with respect to t, we need to multiply by that rate, okay? That's just how implicit differentiation works. And the same thing is going to happen on the other side of the equation. We're going to take the derivative of x squared with respect to t, but x is not t, so while the derivative of x squared is two times x, we also need to multiply by the derivative of x with respect to t, all right? That rate dx dt needs to be included in that derivative, okay? But then finally, to complete this derivative, we also need to take the derivative of 90 squared, but 90 squared is just a constant, right? So the derivative of a constant is just zero. So we actually don't need to worry about writing that down this right here would be the derivative of this equation with respect to t. And so now what our next step is, is to remember what we're solving for here, right? What do we want to find? We want to find the rate at which the player's distance s from home plate is changing. And that is ds dt. We want to solve for that rate. So what we should try to do is isolate that rate by dividing both sides of this equation by 2s, right? We want to solve explicitly for that rate ds dt. So if we divide both sides of the equation by 2s, that will accomplish that. We'll have that ds dt is equal to 2x divided by 2s times dx dt, okay? Now notice that we have 2x divided by 2s we have a two in the numerator and denominator. Those twos will cancel out. We don't have to keep writing those down. But now we have an equation that says that the rate at which s changes with respect to time is equal to x divided by s times dx dt. All right, and so now this is where we plug in the information that we know. We know that dx dt is equal to negative 25 feet per second. We know that at this specific moment in time, x is equal to 20, but then what about s, right? We need to know what s is equal to at this moment in time as well. And in order to determine that, in order to determine what s is equal to, remember how we related these three sides of the triangle? We said that s squared is equal to x squared plus 90 squared. We could just solve for s in this equation by taking the square root of both sides, and that would tell us that s is equal to the square root of x squared plus 90 squared, okay? And so we can plug that in for s in this equation. So let's do that. This is the equation that we currently have, ds dt is equal to x divided by s times dx dt, but now let's replace s with what we said that it's equal to. And so we'll have ds dt is equal to x divided by the square root of x squared plus 90 squared times dx dt. We just replaced s with what it's equal to in terms of x. And so now what we can do is just plug in the values that we know. We know that x is equal to 20 feet and dx dt is equal to negative 25 feet per second. We can plug those two values in for x and dx dt and get our rate ds dt. All right, and so if we do that, here's what we'll find. We'll find that ds dt is equal to 20 divided by the square root of 20 squared plus 90 squared times dx dt, which is a negative 25. And so now if we simplify, we'll find that this is equal to 20 divided by the square root of 20 squared plus the 90 squared. 20 squared is 400 and 90 squared is 8100. So actually, I'm going to rewrite this. We'll have 20, and then we're dividing by the square root of 400 plus 8,100, and we're still multiplying by negative 25. All right, now 400 plus 8,100 is 8,500. So I'm just going to rewrite that right here. We'll have 8,500. And the square root of 8,500 can be simplified 8,500 has a factor that is a perfect square, which is 100. If you divide 8,500 by 100, you'll be left with 85. So we could rewrite this to be 100 times 85, right? 100 times 85 would be 8,500. And the square root of 100 is 10. 
And so this would become 20 divided by 10 times the square root of 85, and we're multiplying by negative 25. All right, now we're almost done. Let's simplify just a little bit more. 20 divided by 10 is two, so this is equal to two divided by the square root of 85 times negative 25, and two times negative 25 is negative 50. So what we find here is that dsdt is equal to negative 50 divided by the square root of 85. And if you wanted to, if you don't like having square roots in the denominator of your answer, you could rationalize this by multiplying by a form of one of the square root of 85 divided by itself. But I'm not going to do that here. Instead, what we can do is just get the approximate value. And so if you were to plug this into your calculator, you would find that it is approximately equal to negative 5.42. And there's some more decimals there, but I'm gonna round it off to two decimal places. And that would be a rate of feet per second. All right, that right there is the rate DSDT at which the player's distance S from home plate is changing. Okay, so as the baseball player is running from second to third at a rate of 25 feet per second, when he's 20 feet from third base, the rate at which this distance right here, the distance from the player to home plate, that is changing at a rate of negative 5.42 feet per second. All right, and so that's it. We have now solved this related rates problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And if you found this video to be helpful, be sure to check out some of my other calculus tutorials that I have available on my channel. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for this video, so I'll see you next time.